When we think of the original Doom series, a lot of themes come to mind. Violence, guns, blood, gore. The one thing that really stood out for me in the classic Doom series were the enemies or demons that made up the bulk of the game's difficulty and in turn made it so great and so fun to play, even 22 years on. Of course, by today's standards, the enemies of Classic Doom may look, well, lackluster when compared to some of the generic 3D rendered shit that we find in any horror sci-fi game nowadays. But at the time, the idea of frightening and intimidating the player through the demon's terrifying appearance and powerful abilities was very much alive in the time of the game's release. So, in honour of the announcement of Doom 4 at E3, I decided to make a video dedicated to the Top 10 Doom Monsters. Number 10. The Imp. A brown humanoid-like creature that shoots fireballs from their hands and slashes you with their claws when you get up close. Nice. They are the backbone of the demon workforce, the laborer, the grunt if you will, but more importantly the fodder. They are encountered on basically every single level of Doom and Doom 2, with a few exceptions. They are however weak as shit, which makes them all the more powerful collectively. If these things manage to corner you, it could in fact spell your doom. Do you get it? Neither do I. Not being powerful, or for that matter scary, the Imp took spot number 10 for being a more iconic or memorable creature of the Doom series. After all, they do appear on the game's cover up. Number 9. The demon, or pinky as they are sometimes referred to as, are pink, slightly stubby, pig-like creatures that need to get up and close and personal to take a good part of you as they have no range attack. In turn, you give them a friendly dose of Mr. Lead, or Mr. Rocket. Demons aren't necessarily hard or scary for that matter, but like the imp, they're more powerful in groups. In fact, in later levels, these things can often be found in massive hordes and have a nasty habit of blocking you in tight spaces. Fortunately, they tend to get in AI fights with other enemies, providing with some much needed breathing room. In this case, they can even be considered an asset to some players. A variant of the demon is the Spectre, which is partially invisible to add more intensity to the gameplay. Number 8. Now we're getting to the big boys. The Mancubus, or Mancubi if they're in groups, are fat, brown, slow abominations wielding two launches connecting to its shaggy, misshaped backside. That's right, I said shaggy. The Mancubus shoots volleys of three fireballs at you like there's no tomorrow, all the while staring back at you with its deep, deep green eyes. The fireballs shoot simultaneously but split off into three different directions from each other, making it difficult to avoid. Although not very hard to kill, they're definitely quite the sight to take in. If Doom has taught us one thing, it's that extreme violence against demons is okay, and in terms of death animations, the man Cubus has it worse off by far. Its brain explodes, its eyes fall out, and the body collapses on itself while its shoulder blade rips through the skin, blood pooling beneath its shattered corpse. And they say video games can't be educational. Number 7. It would be a no-brainer to exclude the Cacodemon from this list, purely because it has encountered just as much as the Demon or the Imp. They're fairly large red creatures that fly and shoot fairly moderate fireballs out of the mouth, all the while keeping a menacing grin on its evil face. I consider the Cacodemon to be on par with the Pain Elemental, as they're both essentially flying spherical cyclopses that shoot things out of their mouth. Although I find the Pain Elemental less intimidating, because its eye is much bigger and it has stubby little arms. This is probably what stimulated the developers to rework its appearance in Doom 64, which looks, well, fucking terrifying. Number 6. The Revenants are the rewired remains of fallen demons revived and put back into combat to continue to stalk the player, hence the name Revenant. 
They are equipped with only a dual rocket mounted chest plate that shoots homing missiles at the player. They also blow some pretty lethal right hands at close range. Their torso and pelvic region is covered in blood. And well, as I said, they're pretty damn tall, making these guys an intimidating sight, as well as a force to be reckoned with. One on one they go down pretty easily, but grouped with other monsters, it's hard to see their projectiles coming. And believe me, their rockets will never, never give up. Number 5. You knew this was coming. It is in fact the last boss of Doom's third episode, Inferno. The Spider Mastermind. The one who, wait for it, masterminded the invasion of the moon bases. Before Ultimate Doom was released, this diabolical brain on mechanical legs was the final boss of the whole game, and turned arachnophobiacs into super arachnophobiacs, and even made the toughest players cringe at the sight of its red eyes and sharp teeth. The only reason the Spider Mastermind isn't higher on the list is because by the time you reach it you have the BFG 9000 and can take you down pretty quickly and pretty easily. Still a much anticipated fight nonetheless and a very formidable foe. Number 4 The reason why I put the Baron of Hell so high on this list is because I absolutely love the design of it. It stays true to the real world idea of demons being associated with goats. I don't know why, they just are. In addition, the name is really cool. It implies that Hell has its own nobility system, at least this is what I interpret it. I mean, as bad as Hell sounds, it does seem pretty organised. But more about the demon itself, it's big, it's strong, and it throws lobs of acid at you. Their likeness can be found in various objects throughout the Doom series, whether that be as stone carvings on the wall, or tortured and hung up on the hook by the Cyber Demon. They're not the easiest thing to kill either, unlike its cousin, the Hell Knight, which is weaker but found in larger numbers. Funnily enough, in Doom 3, they completely dropped the name Baron of Hell and stuck with the Hell Knight and completely reworked its design. Notice the difference? Yeah, it's pretty big. The Hell Knight also went on to appear in the Doom movie. Number 3 How could I forget? It's the one and only Cyber Demon, the final boss of Doom's second episode and the most formidable force a player will come face to face with. Anyone can vouch for that. The Cyber Demon appears in episode 9 of The Shores of Hell, The Tower of Babel, and has to be taken down with a whopping 45 direct rocket hits, all while strafing to avoid the rockets that it fires at you in return. And that's just one. In the last episode of the Plutonia Experiment, there are 13 Cyber Demons. 13! No wonder 13 is an unlucky number. The guy who invented it probably played this map. The Cyber Demon lets out a camel like groan when it first sees you, followed by the never ending sound of its large metal hoof hitting the ground and slowly getting closer. For many players, when this sound is heard, you know your time is up. Number 2. The dreaded Archfile. The one creature of the Doom series that still haunts me. These nasty motherfuckers are as overpowered as they are over creepy. They're very tall, grotesque, skeletal like creatures with a twisted evil face. They can run super fast and can cast a powerful fire spell that blasts you for almost half your health. 
In terms of hit points, it has the fourth highest in the game behind, well, the bosses, and if this wasn't bad enough for you, they also have the ability to resurrect the monsters you've killed, because if you leave them in a room with a bunch of dead bodies and some demon porn, then they're bound to reproduce completely different demons. How does sex work? Like the Baron of Hell, the face can be seen carved into stone on many maps, depicting them as a high tier monster. And also, map 11 of the Plutonia experiment is you trapped in a maze with up to 18 other arch vials. At this point, it's advised to quit the game and never come back. So it's time for number one. We've had fun, but what have we missed? We've done the demon, we've done the caca demon, and we've done the cyber demon. But what other demons are there? Well, perhaps number one isn't even a demon. Perhaps it isn't even an embodied being. So what can it be? Well, I'll tell you after a few honorable mentions. The final boss. Nameless and subtly terrifying. This is what players eventually find at the end of Doom 2 Hell on Earth Map 30 Icon of Sin. In technical terms, it's an evil biomechanical goat head mounted on a wall that shoots a cube out from its demonic brain exposed by hooks that in turn endlessly spawns monsters until the player can blow it up with a well-placed rocket. Quite a mouthful. The final boss is number one, purely for it being completely different and overwhelmingly more powerful than any other monster in the game. It doesn't move. On the contrary, it's stationary, but it spawns things that do move, all while remaining completely lifeless but not lifeless on the wall, staring back at you with those creepy as shit goat eyes. The very same goat eyes that stalked and watched you throughout the entire series. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! It was a goat head! It was a goat head all along! Regardless, I absolutely love the atmosphere that's set up during this final fight. You teleport into this massive ass chamber, and the final boss mutters a satanic phrase that you don't seem to understand, while creepy as shit music plays on in the background. This, however, is not the only level that the final boss appears in. In level 30 of the Plutonia experiment, Gateway to Hell, he also appears. As... a goat head on the wall! Hooray! In some ways, the final boss can be considered Satan himself, as the father and the creator of all the demons throughout the classic Doom series, but this is never said. So, as we conclude our list, the final boss takes the cake as being the best classic Doom monster there is. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more top 10s and Doom related videos in the near future, then why not subscribe? Otherwise, thanks for watching.